Good morning, friends. It's Steve from Southern Illinois. It's a beautiful, misty gray day. I don't know what's the difference, but uh, the last two days, the gray has been light-hearted instead of cold mud. Christmas done gone. New Year begun. So what did you get for Christmas? <clears throat> My favorite gift this year, if I was going to have a favorite, was, is um, uh, a whole tray of cinnamon rolls. See, Vivian, Vivian is battling diabetes and I'm supporting her in that. I eat what she eats. I exercise when she exercises. She's a social creature and nothing is fun if it's not done with someone else. And believe me, we have fun. This is not Steve playing the martyr and sacrificing himself for the good of Vivian. But my friend Rachel felt sorry for me and she gave me a whole tray of cinnamon rolls. And Vivian took one bite of the first roll and said, get these out of my sight. And so into my secret stash they went the cookie jar that Vivian never opens, the place she never sets foot in. And when she's not around, I will open it up and take out one of those cinnamon rolls and pop it in the microwave and warm it up and experience five minutes of heavenly bliss. You see, my friend knows me. She knows that I love cinnamon rolls. And this isn't the first time she's given me a gift that says, I know Steve. Okay, a couple of Christmases ago, she gave me a hat that just, just fits me to a T. You want to see it? Okay, here it is. Yeah, okay. That, that hat says Steve all over it, okay? And this isn't, you know, the, the next year... Um, you know, Vivian was kind of embarrassed by this, but the next year, Rachel said, you know, Steve, I'm pre I am preparing you a scarf to beat all scarfs. And Vivian was a little confused because she hadn't seen any evidence of a scarf in the works. Uh, but then uh, Christmas came and Rachel gave me my scarf. You want to see it? Well, you're going to see it anyhow, okay? Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, there it is. Oh my goodness, this is, this scarf says Steve with a capital S, capital T, capital E, capital V. You see, um, I've never been afraid of playing the fool, okay? Now, Vivian, when she saw the scarf, said, Steve, you're not going to wear that in public, are you? And so after a decade, today is the first public unveiling of Steve's wonderful scarf. I'm no different than the rest of you. I don't like to be ridiculed, made fun of. I don't like shame. I am just as motivated to be competent and responsible and productive and compassionate as, as any of you. There's a part of me that has never minded playing the fool, even when people laugh at me. It reminds me of something that happened in Africa. You see, um, the hospital that I was working at uh, had clinics in outlying communities, and the doctors took turns uh, going out to the clinics and providing services. And every time I would go to a new community, my workday would be interrupted as we walked over to the house of the community leader. Here in, here in America, we would call him the mayor. Uh, in Africa, it's usually more of a hereditary role and they call him the chief. So we would be going to the chief's house to introduce me and um, there would be long drawn out greetings and formalities and then they would bring out Fanta, a, a soft drink, uh, 
and maybe some 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 a, a little bit of food to, for us to share and then there was the obligatory pictures with me and the first time this happened I asked Alcana the clinic uh, director who was my friend I said is this typical is this going to happen every time he said well for you American doctors this is typical for our African doctors not I said why it, it startled me and he said well the the community leaders really don't want to meet our African doctors they want to meet you and I said but Elkana that 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 just harks of racism and I don't want to be any part of that and he got real quiet and he looked down and he said Steve you don't understand our culture you represent affluence technological advancement you even no matter what your position in America when you come here you have you represent more social and economic power than any of us can accrue in a lifetime for most of us in several lifetimes and so when you go to visit the chief you are showing him respect you are treating him as if he is an equal you are sharing your status with him and in sharing your status you raise his status and the status of the entire community and that raises our clinic workers status if you don't go to visit the chief it's as if you're insulting him telling him he's not worth your time he's not you're being stingy you're not sharing your status and that makes it hard for our clinics to do their work and to fulfill their mission which is to earn a listening from the people so uh, regarding the spiritual things that we want to share well that gave me pause okay uh, but did that mean that I had to abandon abandon my cultural conscience in order to serve in theirs it was quite a quandary for me and the way I resolved it was twofold number one I insisted that the local clinic workers and any African doctors that we had with us uh, that day come with me to visit the chief now at first they were kind of embarrassed because they knew that I was the one that the chief wanted to meet but I told Elkana look if I'm going to share my status I'm going to share it with people that are most important and I want the, I want the do, our doctors status to be elevated I I want our clinic workers to, I want them to to be recognized and honored once it was that was explained to them they it was kind of a kind of a fun fun outing for all of us the other thing that I did though was I adopted an attitude that uh, even though in my culture doing that uh, essentially made me look like a racist uh, bigot uh, arrogant uh, the ugly American the fool um, I was going to do it because of what it communicated in their culture I was going to play the fool for them I didn't tell Elkana this, but uh, one day when he told me it was time to go see the chief, I, I kind of uh, popped off, sure, I'll go play the fool for Jesus. And he was kind of startled, and he said, but Steve, this is important. I said, oh, I understand, Elkana, but you don't understand what I'm communicating, okay? What you are asking me to do is to act foolish in my culture to be a fool in my culture in your culture I'm being generous I'm being I'm, I'm sharing my status I'm honoring people in my culture I'm being a fool and he got it 
he got it. And the next time it was time to go visit the chief, he said, so Steve, are you ready to go play the fool? And I said, sure. So let me ask you the question. Are you ready to play the fool? Be safe, my friends. The hospital uh, systems that I'm affiliated with have administered more than 4,000 doses of the first round of, of vaccinations. And uh, one in a thousand people, so four people had some redness and soreness and itching at the site where the the injection was given that's that's the, the most serious perfection so, most serious side effects that have developed so the science is proving reliable the vaccine is safe be prudent but above all keep looking up and i'll stop playing the fool now I'll see you next week.